we have got sort of a bit of a status update where we are, and then also opportunities that still exist on Meerkat, and sort of also a recap of the ones that's, that's still done, um, <clears throat> or that's already done. Then uh, Tracy will also talk about the infrastructure. Um, so first of all, just a general overview. Um, there you can see a slide of essentially the antennas that we built up to now. So we started with one, then we built seven in the career that I'll show a couple of slides on. And um, you know, then obviously the real discussion is, is Meerkat, but it's sort of just to give a bit of context of, of where we are. I'm going to show this slide. I'm not going to talk about that again. Um, that's just <coughs> sort of slightly zoomed in. Um, you know exactly where the site is. You know, Williston from Bakesflake and Marvin Brunplay sort of in the center there. So from Cape Town, it's about 750 or so k's um, to drive there. It's actually about seven or eight hours. Uh, we we will <coughs> with the infrastructure that Trace is putting in. There will be a landing strip on site, so you know, we can get to site uh, fairly efficiently. Then, um, yeah, quick overview on CAT7. Um, as you may or may not have read, uh, you know, CAT7 was a design that was done locally. Uh, it was a composite dish, you know, quite a, quite a novel development. And there's just a couple of slides of you know, the manufacturing of, of the dish, um, taking it to site, <coughs> other components arriving on site, uh, lifting a dish, and then that's pretty much what CAT7 looked like when it's done. And, <clears throat> you know, sort of a status update on CAT7 now, really there's not a lot of engineering support that, that goes into CAT7 any longer. You know, re initially, um, you know, we had some issues with, with power dips and so forth, so we had to put in a UPS and so forth. But it's really well sorted out now. You know, and CAT7 is uh, pretty close to a functioning science instrument. Um, very, very little issues. We've got a logistic support system in place. <clears throat> um, you know, we've got technicians on site to do the maintenance and so forth. So it's really running running quite well. Then to give you a quick overview on, on Meerkat, <clears throat> um, this slide is probably a bit, a bit small to see properly. Uh, sorry. The, essentially, where we are now is we have awarded a uh, Meerkat antenna contract. So <clears throat> the first of the antennas, um, the, the contractor will be on site later this year. The first antenna will be handed over to us by end of January 2013. The second antenna towards April of, of 2014. January 2014. January 2014, sorry. And the second antenna towards um, April of 2014. Um, obviously, that's a very key date for us <coughs> to, to actually make that, you know, because then we start with single dish, dish testing, and when we have two antennas, we can start doing fringes and so forth. Um, and then, you know, <clears throat> obviously also the, the rest of the components that's got to go into the antenna, the feeds and digitizers and so forth, that, that should be um, in time for that time scale. And then, uh, you know, so <clears throat> by the end of 2014, um, we should have about seven, uh, six antennas on site in 2015, 35, and then towards the beginning of the fourth quarter of 2016, all the antennas should be there. And then the goal is to by the end of 2016 to essentially have all the installation done, have all the hardware on site, and to have 32 of the antennas commissioned. So <clears throat> then you've already got a 32 antenna array science instrument um, you know, that, that should be functioning, and then you know, do the commissioning of the last 32 antennas um, during 2017. Um, this does fit in fairly well with the SK time scales, but you know, back integration, there's still a bit of work to be, to be done there. Um, so this is just to, to give you an idea of where Meerkat will be located. So that's our site complex. You saw a few slides on that later on. That's where CAT7 is. This distance is sort of six kilometers. And uh, then this is the, each one of these dots is, is an antenna. The longest baseline is about eight or nine kilometers you know, across that way. <coughs> um, this is what one of the dishes will look like, a CAD model. This is what Tracy's uh, site complex would look like, and she'll talk about it just now. And then, sort of just to talk about opportunities, <clears throat> I'd just like to make the point that, you know, obviously, we, we don't sort of cherry pick um, industries that, that we're going to support. You know, um, there's, <coughs> uh, you, you go to a certain solution, and, you know, then there's going to be specific industry, industries that's going to be involved as a result of that. And you know, also, um, there's been some comments made about 
composite dishes versus panel dishes. <clears throat> Obviously, for Cut7, we've developed the composite dish. You know, we would have been very comfortable to carry on with that for Meerkat, but our tender process didn't didn't work out that way, and we are bound by very strict tender processes that, that we have to follow. Um, but, you know, there the comment can be made that <clears throat> what's lost for one um, sort of part of industry is there's a gain for others, and in the sense that there will be a significant opportunity here for tooling manufacture for panels and then for actual you know, uh, panel production. So, <clears throat> you know, um, aluminium panels, so, so there's a significant industry opportunity that opens up there. Okay, the next couple of slides Trace is going to take. Well, Marie, a little bit more yeah. of those opportunities. Yes, yeah. Trace is just going to do we infrastructure. Can we hands on you, Nick? Yes, we can, yeah. Obviously, you can overview the infrastructure, and um, Willem didn't mention what our timeline is. We actually still need to be watched here, and we have finished all the infrastructure by the end of this year. So it's quite a rigorous program, but obviously you need to have everything in place on the ground to begin to start delivering the dishes. So what you can see on the, on the screen is basically an overview or aerial view of the road network from Meerkat. You can see we have basic farm roads. This is where the Meerkat core will be. This is where all the plat platforms will be for the dishes. That's where we'll start building the foundations, and that's where the actual dishes will go. Um, we've already started or nearly completing all the electrical and fiber articulation um, on site. Just the fiber ducting, the fiber cable, the tether will still go out for, the, um, for that work probably later this year. Okay, Villa, new change. Um, Justin has mentioned the power to Meerkat. Uh, we recently upgraded the Karoo substation just outside Carnarvon from 5 MBA to 10 MBA. Uh, we did that on behalf of ESCOM as part of a self built scheme, which we've now handed back to them at the end of last year. So the whole substation has been commissioned it's live. At the moment, we're operating the power line at 22 kilowatt capacity, and we'll switch over to 33 kilowatt capacity on the next month or two. Um, so, like Justin said, the cap on the power supply to site is approximately 5 um, MBA at this stage, so there will be a cap for SKA phase 1. Um, you can see our power line running up to the site. This is about 30 kilometers from the site. So, from Carnarvon to 30 k's outside the site, we've got a wooden pole structure, and then we change over to a steel pole structure um, in terms of EMC protection. So, we don't want sparking on the line, which causes interference with the, the dishes. Okay, also the optic fiber link actually runs on the power line as well, so we've got remote access from Cape Town directly to the site. This is the site complex, um, what it will look like probably at the end of this year. Um, this is our existing dish shed at the top here. Um, we're going to extend this almost, um, it will be three times the current size, and that's where the actual dishes from your cut um, will be assembled. At the back here we've got a pedestal integration shed, and that's where the pedestal will be Banking structure and the actual dish will be assembled, um, and then it will be shipped off from here to the respective positions on the Meerkat site. What we've also got here will be new, a new building on this side of here. This is what we call our career rate process building. And you can see it's a bunker building, um, and that's where all the front line or front end processing will happen from the dishes. So all the data will be received directly from the dishes. It will be processed within this building, it will then be taken over our 10 big um, link from site to Cape Town, and that's where um, further analysis will happen. Adjacent to the KOPB is our power facility. This is where we keep all our rotary UPS um, and generators, backup supply. Um, and this is currently happening at the moment on site. So you'll see we've already started setting up foundations for the dish shed, um, pedestal integration shed, and we've um, started construction of the array processor building and the power facility. This is just an aerial view from our North Pack Hill. It was taken pretty recently. You can see we've started the preparation for the extensions here. Um, and this is the bunker building where the data processor building will be, as well as the power facility. <coughs> this is a zoom in photo again of the bunker <coughs> and the extensions to the shed. Okay, in terms of opportunities for the infrastructure, um, we recently far ahead. Um, so from an operational point, 
on an annual basis, we normally procure uh, typically equipment like vehicles, radars, rollers. Um, so that happens on an annual basis as a need of price of different ops and maintenance of roads and things like that. From an infrastructure point, um, we've awarded quite a few tenders already, and obviously construction is happening at the moment. So the roads, construction camps, all weather landing strip, the electrical and fibre ducting reticulation was awarded last year in March, and obviously the CIDD grading applies for this. The career road process of building, power building, extensions to the desktop we said, a dish assembly shed, personal integration building, and also workshops at our career contains support base have also been awarded in July last year. Once again, CIDD grading applies. The CAT 7 and Meerkat building management system has also been awarded, so there will be a phase one and phase two installation of the DNS system. The RFI shielding system for the career road process building has also been awarded. Um, this is a 42% local company and 58% subcontracted to an international company. Um, the Meerkat road to UPS MV switch clear and the transformers, this was also awarded in uh, November last year. And once again, CID and grading applied to this tender. So all of this is work in progress at the moment. Um, the other tender that is going to be awarded shortly is the CAT7 and GATCAT local area network. And then the only two further tenders for the infrastructure, and this is the one big one, is the GATCAT and tenant foundations, which is currently out on tender. And in fact, it was a compulsory site inspection last week. Um, and once again, the CID grading applies to this. So this is the construction of the actual foundations for the dishes. And then the other one at the moment is more of an operational issue. It's the provision of security for the NETPAT site. Um, we've got a contract that's expired. And obviously we're looking at, um, well, this is out of our meeting at the moment for security for the site. So all in all, I think from the infrastructure point, we're pretty far in, um, in terms of opportunities. Okay. Thanks, Tracy. Good. Um, just before I carry on, most of you is probably uh, fairly familiar maybe with this architecture, but uh, just to make sure that when I talk about the various sections that you understand where it fits in. So, you know, we've, we've got our dishes, <coughs> then on the dish we've got a sort of uh, what we call an indexer with four receivers on it. That exists of essentially um, we call it receiver, it's a feed in LNA, and then a digitizer that does RF to analog conversion. Um, we have optical fiber that takes your signal from each of the dishes to your um, career array processor building. I'll just say the correlated building um, to make it shorter. And um, you know that's where <coughs> your your correlations happen, your science processing, and then obviously the result of that is uh, the science image that you get out of it. Um, so talking about the dishes, <coughs> um, as I've as I've said, the contract for that has been awarded. Uh, the key point about this tender, the, it was awarded to a South African company, Stratasat. <clears throat> they do have backup from an uh, international company that's really well known in antenna design. Um, the company's name is GD Satcom. So the design is being done in a combination of the Germany and USA facilities. I think the important point to note there is that we will own all the IP and we'll also own the background of IP required to be able to utilize um, that uh, design that's being done. And then also, there's a 75% local content um, requirement on that contract. It's a, it's a contractual condition. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, that is not too far off uh, if you were, if it were a completely local contract um, in any case. You know, as an example, on CAT7, we typically had about 80-82% local content because obviously you've got imported um, equipment in any case. So, uh, you know, we, we were very comfortable with, with this thing. <clears throat> then, obviously, there is still a lot of opportunities that exist on that. You know, it's not a primary contract, but <clears throat> in order to get to that 75% local content, um, you know, industry can play an important part and, you know, we can introduce you to start a set and you can contact them directly. Sort of the, the areas that we primarily would look at, uh, you know, azimuth bearings, um, gearboxes, you know, cabling conduits, EMI enclosures. Um, obviously, <clears throat> RFI is a big issue for us, you know, so to have proper enclosures um, that prevents uh, shielded enclosures that prevent any RFI interference, that's important to us. And QA, you know, just heavy, heavy manufacturing, your pedestals your tooling manufacturing, <clears throat> and then also the production of your actual panels. I've mentioned that previously. 
um, you know, installations on site, um, you know, both installation and then the provision of support equipment to do that, cranes, forklifts, cherry picker, you know, trucks for transport and so forth. System integration, and then once you've built this thing, you've got to, got to measure it up. You know, so surveying the dishes, there's certainly an opportunity um, that, that exists there as well. Um, then two components at this point that we don't see that's being supplied locally, but you know, we'd be very happy to be proven wrong on that, is the provision of lead screw and then you know, the actual manufacturing of the antenna control units. The design of the control units wouldn't be done here, but you know, if the manufacturing and assembly and testing and stuff can be done here, that certainly wouldn't be, wouldn't be bad. Um, okay, talking about the receivers. <coughs> the, the receiver development has been split into two um, parts, essentially. Uh, we, we contracted the local company, EMSS, to do the design of the L-band receiver for us. And it's really a very um, integrated design. Once, once that is done, <coughs> you know, there's very no possibility of actually exchanging components and so forth, because the whole thing has got to work together as a system. And you know, you, we've spent a lot of effort, <coughs> or they've spent a lot of effort, on you know, surveying and getting LNAs around the world and testing LNAs, really selecting the best uh, option that they have there. So, once the design is done, there's going to be limited scope for actually changing components. components. But what we will have, <coughs> we will have a qualified data pack um, and build instructions to, to actually build these things. Um, so, that is, that is essentially the, the next thing that's, that's going to happen. So, <coughs> again, you know, there's, I think, two main opportunities there. One is specifically to, to you know, the tender for the big tender for, for building all these receivers. So maybe just a point there. <coughs> the time scale on that is essentially towards the end of this year that that tender will go out. Um, you know, a company that, that wants to play in this game is going to have to have some, some key expertise. Um, and, and it's going to have to be demonstrable. Uh, that is typically <coughs> uh, electromagnetic simulation capability, you know, experience on vacuum system, you know, experience on low noise measurement techniques, you know, specifically experience in LNAs, <coughs> um, electronics capability, there's, there's quite a few electronic boards and so forth. Just manufacturing, integration, commissioning of these things. There's a, there's a subcontractor uh, process requirements document that we've produced that we can distribute to anyone. And any contract <coughs> that goes out, you know, you've got to comply to, to that requirement. And then you know, also there's certain test equipment <coughs> that we've developed as part of this um, first contract that will be made available on a CFE basis. Uh, then you know, even if you do not do the, the main job on this, <coughs> obviously there's still quite a bit of other work that, that, that can be done you know, that can be subcontracted by the company that actually does that, and you know that is supply of materials, <coughs> you know, fairly fairly fine machining. Um, it's you know your, your tolerances and things has got to be good enough so that you can actually keep a vacuum. Then uh, <coughs> manufacturing of stainless steel piping and manifolds and so forth for for helium systems. So we will have. The helium bottle in the yoke, and there's, there's a network of pipes and manifolds to actually take this helium to your, your various receivers. <coughs> and as you'll know, um, you know, getting something airtight is one thing, but getting it helium tight is <laughs> a bit of, of, of another issue. Um, then the importers for vacuum and cryogenic equipment, as I said, there it's, it's, it's fairly specific components that we're going to be looking at there, and there's not really going to be much of an opportunity to, to replace components that was included in the design. And then manufacturing and population of, of PCBs. <clears throat> this is just to give you an idea of, of what we're talking about and sort of so you know that's about a meter, so that gives you an idea of the of the size of this. So what we're talking about is <clears throat> around 70 of, of these that we want to have manufactured. So that's 64 plus a couple of spares obviously. So you know some of the components that's in that. <clears throat> that's the so-called OMT that's sitting there, uh, which is a lot simpler than the one we had on cut seven, so it's easier to make hopefully. Um, and then you know cryostate bodies <clears throat> and actual wool manufacturing and so forth. So there's there's quite opportunity for machining. 
um, and the component supply on this. Um, on the digitizer, so the digitizer is still a component that sits on the antenna, and then when we start, <coughs> the TFR is essentially a system that just distributes a timing and a frequency reference to all your antennas so that you can essentially timestamp your data. And then your correlator <coughs> is essentially the processor that sits inside the, the correlator room. So, you know, the things that we look there, look at there, <coughs> the digitizer, because it sits on the antenna and it's not in any other enclosure, it's important for us to have an EMC shielded enclosure there. So, you know, again, um, they, one will have to have some experience on these sort of these sort of enclosures. It's got to be um, machined with really high tolerances, <coughs> PCBs, um, actually populating and testing these PCBs, and then you know, various radio frequency <coughs> components like filters and so forth that need to be designed. On the TFR, pretty much the, the same sort of thing. Um, on the, you, it's, it's distributed through, uh, through the optical fiber network, so <coughs> you, know, you need your termination equipment on that. So the design and production of those modules is certainly an opportunity. PCB manufacturing and then you know, various electronic parts. <coughs> and the correlated beam, beam former. Now this is already sitting inside of a shielded, a shielded room. So the same sort of stringent requirements on, on manufacturing and machining of the enclosures doesn't apply here. But still, um, you know, we don't want to just use a standard off-the-shelf thing <coughs> with with a little bit of care, not not spending a lot of extra money on this, you can get sort of, I think, an extra 30 dB level of shielding on it. So, you know, if we can get something more or less for free, obviously we, we want that. Um, again, PCBs, <coughs> and then you know, the actual supply and installation of these things in, in the career. Um, you know, it's going to be quite a few racks of equipment that wants to be in, installed and tested and so forth. Um, looking at the optical fiber network, <coughs> the tender for, so <coughs> what Tracy is applying is the ducting and, and ducts and so forth, so that, that is all there. But the actual supply and pulling in of the fiber, um, that's a contract that will go out under the, under the antenna. That will happen um, fairly shortly. So we're talking about <coughs> roughly 200 kilometers worth of fiber there, and it's going to be completed middle of 2040. So and obviously <coughs> the function of this is just to have a network for both the signal that you receive to um, transport that to your correlator room, and then also for your control and monitoring system to send signals to your antenna, and obviously also for your time and frequency reference. Then um, <coughs> we, we have to buy some flexible exposed fiber cables. That is essentially you know, just to get from the pedestal up to your <coughs> receivers um, to, yeah, and uh, then on RFI, we sort of in the in the process of looking at the reverberation chamber. So you know, we EMC testing. So there's some shielding um, potential there as well. And you know, actually, uh, once we have our components, do the installation and position the chamber. Uh, some test equipment, and you know, the the whole thing about EMC products and RFI shielding. You'll hear that's that's sort of a theme that will come up all the time. Uh, looking at CAM and SPT, <coughs> on the CAM side, essentially all the software that we need for control and monitoring um, will be developed in-house. That's to quite a large extent an extension of what we've done in CAT7. Um, so the stuff that we'll buy there is essentially servers, racks, and you know, other IT equipment, network equipment, and so forth. Pretty much commercial off-the-shelf type of stuff. So you know, they could certainly be people interested in that. On the science processing side, <coughs> Um, we're looking at research and development. There's, there's still quite a bit of, of, of that that needs to happen. So <coughs> there's essentially two, two key areas. One is uh, high-performance computing technologies. You, know, you would have heard Justin say that there's, there's two things. The amount of data that you get, <coughs> you, you, can't, you can't store it. You've got to process it in real time. So obviously that places significant, uh, or, you know, it, it requires a very <laughs> You've got to be able to, to, to uh, process the data very quickly. Um, and then also, <coughs> once you've processed it, you've got to, you've got to be able to, to store it. And then, you know, afterwards, again, access that data and, you know, be sure that your data is safe and backup and so forth. 
So that's the two areas that um, that will be primarily looked at. So we're looking at <coughs> roughly 18 months uh, duration contract there, probably going out on tender roughly middle 2030. And then the result of that will, will feed into the actual uh, production of a high-performance computing cluster looking towards the middle of 2050. So essentially there, you know, mostly <coughs> IT equipment, and then also data archive, also 2015 time frame, and roughly you know, looking at a storage capacity of about 10 petabytes. So it's, it's quite, uh, quite substantial. <coughs> and, uh, yeah, so to, to summarize the opportunities on, on Meerkat, <coughs> um, you know, just maybe to make the point that you know, all tenders does get advertised on the SKA website. It's always also advertised on the NRF website and Government Gazette. That's essentially Treasury regulation. Um, so the ones that's, that's on there at the moment is the Antenna Foundation. And I think the Union of Security, I'm not sure whether it's been issued yet, actually. Um, <clears throat> on, on the telescope, the biggest on the telescope, the biggest opportunities um, is essentially the fiber contract. It's quarter two of, of this year, and the exposed fiber, quarter two this year, our band receivers towards the end of this year. And then <clears throat> on the science processing side, both computing and storage towards the third quarter of this year, and then you know, flowing out of that computing class, then data archive towards 2050. Then other other main areas, and you know, it's just not that well developed that I can call attenders at that stage, but you know, many of those things, if, if you have enough racks and it goes above half a million rand, then you've got to go out and tender as well. <clears throat> so quite a few of these will, will be tenders. Um, but, you know, the sort of things that we're certainly looking at, these antenna components, manufacture supply installation of those, the support equipment that we spoke about, cranes, jerry pickers, <clears throat> um, receiver manufacture, you know, just in general, there's a lot of manufacturing and machining that needs to be done. RFI enclosure, enclosures we picked up that we talked a lot about PCBs. Um, many of these PCBs is multi-layered boards that need to be printed, <coughs> and then also populating these and, and testing these PCBs. So once it's been populated, uh, fiber termination equipment, uh, quite a bit of RF components, and then in general, you know, network and computer equipment. Um, <coughs> so you know. Maybe if you're interested in these areas, what I would strongly suggest is that you contact our supply chain office, and Sean Basson, he will look talk later on, and you know actually get on our supplier database, <coughs> because then it makes it a lot easier for us to, to actually get hold of you as well. Um, and and you know, we, we know that you're out there and what sort of um, services you can provide. Uh, Where is the seal? Oh. Okay, I'm just going to press this button now. Okay, I'm not going to talk about. Okay, maybe that's my last slide. Uh, okay, so, so Bernie has already spoken about the ABN. So there's a couple of <coughs> opportunities that, that arises there as well. Um, ABN project manager there is Venkat um, at, at the back there. So any questions on the AVN, you know, Venkat will, will answer. Essentially, what it comes down to is <clears throat> that a big part of this is refurbishment of existing telecommunication antennas, typically sort of 32 meter size. You know, some of them has been standing for a while, so you can imagine to get them up and running again is not necessarily all that trivial. Plus, radio astronomy is not what they were designed for originally. Um, so, the you know the, many of them were sort of just just sitting in a very specific orientation. So you know they weren't designed with the sort of duty cycle that we're talking about. So there's quite a bit of, of work that can that, that can be done there. You know there's um, bearing replacements, um, end stops that's not functioning anymore that needs to be replaced. General structural steel sections that need to be replaced. Motors, gears, boxes, electronics both on your signal path side <coughs> and also controlled and monitoring systems, and then you know, replacing some of the reflective panels. So there's, there's quite a bit of scope. Um, sort of services that are required in the countries is obviously 
to, to support this installation, you know, we need cranes, banking, <coughs> constructive testing, those sort of things. And then we're also looking at some new builds. <coughs> so typically, this will be radio telescope system systems around 22 to 25 meters. Um, the one constraint is that some of them is going to operate in really high wind environments. Um, so, so that will probably have quite an impact on, on the design side. And uh, you know, but these things will, will definitely go out on then. And um, yeah, then in general, you know, obviously, eventually you've got to connect these antennas uh, with fiber up to your backbones, fibers that run up the coast and so forth. <clears throat> but as I always say, you know, that last mile to actually get that connection onto that yeah. backbone, there will certainly be opportunities opening up there as well. And uh, yeah, I think that is about what I have. Is there any questions? I might, I might have missed this in your presentation, but the digitizer, digital backend, TFR, uh, is that likely to go out to tender as well? And if so, when is that likely to happen? That's what we... Sorry, I just couldn't hear the question. <laughs> yeah, I think you better come up front to view it. Yeah, so, will the DBE stuff go out to tender? Um, so, yeah, so whenever we place a purchase order above 500,000 Rand, it has to go out to tender. So, if we, when is that likely to be? Um, digitizer is likely to be in next, during next year, during next calendar year. Um, the TFR is actually probably a lot smaller of a system. So, and, and we'll, we'll break that up into parts. So, there'll be fiber optics involved with that, which is handled separately. And then transmission and receiver, so it, it may not actually go out to tender. Um, but we have to start implementing. Uh, it's it's a phased approach that we match it up to when the antennas are available. Um, and so we start off with something very small, and then the rollout will determine exactly how that goes. So TFR maybe not tender. Sure, so Francois, you did you mention something about Unido that listed us recently in there? So we should just mention the program. Right. So um, Unido has uh, what they call the SPX program, which is uh, an attempt to keep uh, work local. So it's a localization program. And uh, they actually have a, a service where they would assess companies and register them on their database. And so I would encourage all of you, if you haven't met them yet, to just have a look at that and see if that would be a valuable thing for you to do. I think we would, in the first instance, we would look at their database and, and use that as a starting point. Obviously, we'll add anyone else who's, for whatever reason, not prepared to participate there. But it looks like a very uh, useful initiative. And if you would like to join that, just send an email off to industry at SKA and I'll send you the links. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so now there's a there's a couple of uh, sort of very short 